let's talk about Judas. Um, again, the new game coming from Ken Levine Studio. Uh, and this this was an interesting set of previews. We got a whole bunch of previews from Ryan McCaffrey, uh, Jeff Keighley. Uh, I think it was another FPS podcast. There's a bunch of them. And apparently a lot of people got invited out to, um, again, just Boston to where the studios are set. I guess um, they missed our email or yeah, something. Yeah, no, I don't know. Not seen it. Yeah, I know. I guess I guess we ain't, we ain't catch it. But don't worry, don't worry, Ken. That's all right. We'll we'll get you back in post. We might might have went to spam. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But you know, again, <laughs> it, it's 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 being thought of as kind of like a Bioshock in space, quote unquote, t- uh, type of deal. Very nonlinear story structure. Uh, three kind of different major side characters that will appear in different capacities in the game. Uh, again, a lot of different uh, a lot of different narrative outcomes. Excuse me. Uh, rogue like elements that are there galore. And again, just on top of that Bioshock gameplay that we know and love, you know, one hand magic or ability, other hand gun, get shooting, get the rocking. There's a lot of really cool elements in there that, you know, we saw that were expanded upon a little bit in some of these previews. But uh, from from your side, when how do you feel about how Judas is looking? It looks bananas. Um, it looks really, really crazy. I love the aesthetic like that. They're really going full acid trip is what mm-hmm. it feels like it's just so it's so fucking cool um i'm really excited to see what they what they come up with the, the way they were talking about the narrative lego pieces um that sounds something like it kind of reminds me a little bit of fallout 4 but not not really as much but it's like yo you siding with this faction is going to put a damper on this over here or like you don't know how this is going to affect you but it, it's like that on steroids you mm-hmm. know like hey this person will actively get in your way this person will be oh this person who used would play a role in a supportive way otherwise now actually hates you and really wants to make sure that you don't succeed in life and i think that's really cool i think it's going to be it's going to give the replayability like you're going to want to replay this a couple times like especially like if i were to get this game depending on the length i if it's like a good if it's a solid good length i could see myself replaying it in siding with each faction wholeheartedly and then maybe mixing it up maybe i side with these two factions but not so much these two factions see how many we'll see what 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 changes and what doesn't change i think that's a, a really cool uh i i think what they're doing with the narrative is kind of creating a new life for the replayability of single player games instead of making the the game or like the experience of replaying something like dragon's dogma like the first thing that comes to mind instead mm-hmm. of being like i'm gonna replay this game just so i can see what it's like to play it as like uh, instead of doing rogue archer i'm gonna do uh warrior mage this time around mm-hmm. like now you can play this game you're going to be playing like instead of playing this game siding with these people i'm going to side with these people and I, i'm going to switch it up on this this on this side so i'm excited to see this game like it looks really really fun it looks like a, mm-hmm. a wild ride yeah and i guess to kind of i'm trying to like contextualize it it's like you're not changing you're not changing the person that's in the roller coaster seat you're changing the roller coaster tracks themselves are adjusting them slightly yeah, each time you perfect. go in. Yeah. And it's like, that's so cool to me. Again, the way they were explaining it, again, the game could the game potentially has multiple endings, but throughout the game, as you interact and as you do missions, it's non-linear, so you can kind of go with whichever way you see fit. These three main characters, which is I, I believe Tom, Nefertiti, and Hope, they're all the leader of like their three specific factions, I guess, and like the enemy types that you might see around. And they'll interact with you as you do these missions. So like as you're going, like again, Jeff Keighley was explaining it on one side, as you're going to one end, you know what I'm saying? This the one person, like, say, say for example, Nefertiti, you want to do a, a mission for Nefertiti, you're going to do it for her. But Tom sees that and you're like, yo, Tom. I was like yo what the fuck what's going on and like and apparently there's like sabotage elements like like the other npcs will block certain doorways like like tom or hope will block uh again will they block a doorway or they'll sick uh, different enemies on you try and stop you from achieving that objective and they'll interact with you in different ways that different dialogue options will pop up and it's just that that ability to create an organic feel and, and again it's 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 something I explain in certain ways with Dragon's Dogma 2. I talk about this this week and not necessarily in the same exact execution, but the intent and the concept. And I think there was like 
I think there was a description of like a loose similarity to the nemesis system where like, you know, the uh, the AI just basically in, in essence, they react the AI and NPCs. They react to you instead of just, oh, being on a track. They have their own little set of, a you know, those have inputs and, and, and responses, but they won't do much else. There's actual reaction and and really kind of living dynamics in the gameplay itself. And, you know, again, of course, nemesis system doesn't in, in its own way. This Judas system with the again narrative elements do, does it in a different way. But I've been talking about this this week. And I've been thinking about this for a while. Just like, how do you make games feel organic? How do you make them feel like, yo, this shit's only happening to you or a select few people? You know what I mean? And stuff like this is is really really cool. Uh, I, I just find it fascinating how like you can take a single player track, single player campaign, and again, you create so many different inputs and stimuli that you can go about the game one way and only about like 7% or like 12% of the world is going to experience it exactly how you did it. And who knows how intricate that they're planning these interaction points and, and the gameplay, you know, sabotage and the reactions from the, the faction leaders and the NPCs that you're going to be dealing with to, you know, as they're vying for your affection, like who knows how that's going to end up and how deep that well will go. But it might result in some really, really organic moments that, oh, in your playthrough, only you experience that. Whereas in other playthroughs, people didn't even get on that side. Like, how, how the fuck do you even get to that area? Like, we don't even know. Like, it, yep. it, that's really, really cool to me. Like, and I think that's kind of the next step of where we're going in terms of next actual next gen gameplay, not graphics, not, you know, what I'm saying not fidelity, not 8K, 12K. I don't really care about any of that shit now because I don't have the equipment for it at this point in time. But, how do you really create the next gen gameplay? Shout out to DX from YT because he did a video about this as well. And that, that really got me thinking about these questions. Like, how do you develop the gameplay loop to fe really feel like it's a next level thing? It's more interactive. It's more reactive. It feels like it's living, breathing. And it, this looks like one of the ways that people are doing that and executing that. And, you know, with like the selective memory loss and, and like, you know, kind of replaying certain elements of the game. Again, there's roguelike elements in this game as well. So you're going to be trying a lot of different paths, going to be redoing, you know, like doing things a, a slightly different way or adjusting to how things were dying and dying again and getting reborn over again. Like this is really cool. And I think this can exemplify how you create a really next gen gameplay loop not just a next gen looking game a truly next gen game with how the narrative how the gameplay loop how you react to the game and how the game reacts to you that's really where this next gen shit is starting to lie and i love it uh on a random tangent i hate that wb license like licensed the nemesis system to hell we have i have oh man my closing note is gonna be about people licensing shit it's gonna be so annoying but and again that's where we need to go that's where i think a lot of these different experiences need to go how do you create how do you create more organic interaction or make it feel like there's organic interaction between you and the world like really immerse you in the next level like again you said it before dragon's dogma 2 does a really good job at this but in their own way with you know the world's interactions like monsters will fight with monsters animals will fight with animals they'll fight with you again the environment reacts to you in different ways the pawns will show up at like random times dragons play there's so many ways that the game feels real and immersive there's so many inputs that it can feel real because you you won't touch the same buttons as another person and you won't activate the same things as another person so it creates that feeling and judas i i think is is on track to possibly really bring a whole new face to that type of conversation of making a game so interactive it feels organic and i'm loving what i'm seeing i think this is really dope damn that was a lot of words rate this shit five stars man <laughs> that was going in <laughs>